So coming back to Ramsey theory, recall that the Ramsey number, RST, is going to be the smallest positive integer such that any simple graph on this many vertices either has a blue complete graph KS or a red complete graph, graph KT. So any way that we color the edges, that's going to happen. And we proved a lot of cases of this. These are the ones that we've done so far. And we have this lovely theorem that gives us an upper bound. We know that we can take RST and we can iterate on this bound using these two base cases to get some kind of upper bound. The Ramsey number can't be bigger than something. What we're going to do next is use the probabilistic method that we just saw for two colorable sets. And we're going to use that to prove the following lower bound. The Ramsey numbers are at least this big. The central Ramsey numbers, that is. So let's see how this kind of a proof is going to go. And we're going to do it by induction on T. And that'll be a great way to let us see it working on the base cases. Induction on T. So let's do not just one base case, but let's do all the base cases that we know. Okay, well, what is R of 2, 2? So looking over here, it's either one of these that you want. So this is equal to 2, which is greater than or equal to 2 to the 2 over 2. So the theorem checks out. What about R of 3, 3? Again, that's a case we've computed. R of 3, 3 is 6. And this is indeed greater than or equal to 2 to the 3 halves. And we can even do R of 4, 4. This is equal to 18, which is a whole lot bigger than 2 squared. So we can see here that the bound was tight in this case. It was exactly right. Um, and here it's definitely way off. So we don't know how well this bound does, and there are other bounds that we can prove, but at least it gives us something. Okay, so let's go with our inductive hypothesis. What's our inductive hypothesis going to be? It's going to be for any j strictly less than t, we're going to assume the result holds, which is to say that r of jj is going to be at least 2 to the j halves. Okay, and we can also assume now that t is actually greater than or equal to 5, because we've done lots of base cases. So we can let t be nice and big. That sometimes helps. And what are we trying to prove? We're trying to prove that if we take any edge coloring of kn, right, red and blue for the edges, that we're going to get either a monochromatic, well, either a kt or a kt of one color or the other. Okay? So we're going to, again, think about this probabilistically. So we're going to let n be any number that's less than 2 to the k halves. Okay? And we're going to consider red, blue edge colorings of the complete graph on n vertices. Okay? So given a subset, say A, of k vertices of kn, we want to compute, let's see, what is the probability that A is all red. What's that probability? Well, we can think that we have, there's one half chance that any given edge is equal to, is, is colored red. So we can think of this as one to, uh, one half to the number of edges. Well, I said that we have k vertices, so I know that we have k choose two edges if I'm thinking about the complete graph. So this is a complete graph on A, the subset of vertices. And remember, the size of A is K, so this is 1 half to the K choose 2. 1 half to the K choose 2. And again, that's because this is the number of edges of A. Okay? So that's where we're going to start. And that's the probability that it's all red. But now let's think about this. What's the probability... So we want to get now, we're going to kind of extend this. So what is the probability that some k element subset of the n vertices is all red? Okay. Well, this is at most, right, the sum over all a, that's a k element subset, of the probability that A is all red. Okay, well, how many K element subsets are there? 
Well, that's just n choose k. This is, again, the number of k element subsets of n. And then what's the probability for each one? We're going to have 1 half to the k choose 2, because that's what we computed before. All right, so what is this? Well, we're going to use a, a fun fact, a fact that you're going to get to prove in your homework, lucky you, which is that n choose k is always less than or equal to n to the k divided by 2 to the k minus 1. Whenever you're doing analytic combinatorics, so an analysis on these numbers, uh, an, an analysis sort of like this, you're going to use these sort of facts to bound binomial coefficients and factorials and things like that. It turns out to be incredibly convenient for solving problems like this. So using this fact, this lets us um, prove that this, okay, this part here, we now know is less than or equal to, just using this fact, um, this is going to be less than or equal to n to the k divided by 2 to the k minus 1 times 1 over 2 to well, we can write this out as k times k minus 1 over 2, okay? All I've done here is I've used this bound for this term, and then I've written this in a different way and just expanded out what k choose 2 is. So what is this? Well, this is strictly less than 2 to the minus k halves plus 1, which, okay, that's less than or equal to a half. So what's the point? The point is the probability that... Um, sorry, the probability that some k element subset is all red is, at, is strictly less than a half. So if we're going to combine that up, this implies that the probability of some k element subset um, is all red or all blue is going to be strictly less than 1 half plus 1 half, which is 1. So the probability is less than 1. And now I should say that I realize now that I've made a slight thing. So let's go back. And here I'm changing t to be k. I somehow switched my variables in the middle of the proof. And I apologize for that. But we'll go back and put it there. So this fact here, you need... This is where we use the fact that n is less than 2 to the k halves. That's your hint for how to prove this fact. We need the fact that n is less than or equal to 2 to the k halves. Okay, And then we're going to say the probability that some subset of k things is all red or all blue, the probability that we have a complete graph that's monochromatic is strictly less than 1. So that tells us that we can do it, so we can get a counterexample. We doesn't tell us how to find it. It doesn't tell us where it is. It's a completely non-constructive proof, but it's rather elegant in the fact that it's saying, okay, well, it's possible to do something. Therefore, the Ramsey number has to be bigger than that.